Starly here again, and welcome to part 3 of everything to know about vectors in Clip Studio Paint. This is the final video, so we're in the home stretch now of becoming experts with vectors. I will leave links to part 1 and part 2 up here and in the description for those who haven't seen them yet. In this video, we'll be going over all the ways vectors can make drawing easier and faster. This is really the fun stuff, so let's jump right in. This is by far one of the most powerful tools in Clip Studio Paint. I absolutely love this tool when I'm drawing buildings because they are very repetitive with lots of windows and the vector eraser just makes things so much easier. To get to the vector eraser, you have to be on a vector layer and then click the eraser tool or quick key E. You will have to make sure you can see this vector eraser option turn on. If you see it's grayed out, that means you're on a raster layer, so you have to make sure you're on the right layer. There are three options here for the vector eraser. The first is Erase Touched Areas. Next is Erase Up to Intersection. And lastly is Erase the Whole Line. So let's try out the first option. So when I use this option, you can see that only the area I'm drawing over is being erased. Sometimes the eraser will be a bit finicky with the edges here. So you can go to the operation tool, grab the point, and drag it around as needed. I frequently do this after using the vector eraser, so you will likely have to use this to keep the line nice and clean. Now let's try out Erase up to the intersection. This one is my favorite because you can, for example, have a column of windows here, make sure you have your perspective ruler showing, and snap to special ruler is turned on. You can now draw a line straight down, and now all of those lines are gone. Your windows are perfect with such little work. You can see how quickly I just finished this entire building. The last option is whole line and it means just as it sounds. It will erase the entire line. It erases the entire line regardless of what's overlapping it. You might think this is useless, but I do actually use this fairly frequently. For example, I made a line here that crosses through the background of this building on both sides. This happens a lot if there's like a line of the floor with a lot of objects in front of it and the objects have a lot of details in them. So I can use the second option to erase in between the objects, but because there's so many of them and the lines are so thin, it would be very hard to get rid of these. Instead, what I can do is erase the first part where it intersects the building, then go to erase whole line, and now I can just erase a portion of these and that background line is now gone. And that makes it so much easier and less stressful. It's the most powerful vector tool and it's so easy to use. If you do your line art completely in vector format, create a new raster layer, and put it below the vector line art layer. And you have to do this as a raster layer since you can't color on a vector layer. Go to the fill bucket tool or click quick key G and make sure fill up to vector path is turned on. You also want to make sure apply to connected pixels only is turned on as well as refer multiple. The area scaling here will not make a difference so it doesn't matter if you have it turned on or not. Then select a color and fill in the areas with the color. Okay. If you turn down the opacity on your vector line art layer, you can see that it has created a nice smooth line right in the middle of our vector line. This is what we're looking for when we do flat colors. So if you do vector line art, you can save a lot of time with doing flat colors.
This part will be especially helpful for comic artists and illustrators who are drawing the same thing over and over again. Vectors is a super convenient way to make assets without having to know complicated 3D software. First I'll cover how to make windows really easily. I have this one window I drew using the perspective rulers and now I want to repeat this along the side of the building. Drawing each one would be way too time consuming. All you need is this one window. Now I will select this using the operation tool, copy it, make a new vector layer, and paste it. And Clip Studio Paint automatically pastes it in the same place. Sometimes when you copy and paste a vector, it pastes it on the same layer. So for this, make sure you make a new vector layer. Always make sure you pay attention to your layers. Now I'm going to click the transform tool. And you want to make sure the mode here is set to one of the scale options. So I have mine on scale and rotate. In the middle of the transform box, it is a little bit hard to see, but there is a little crosshair. That indicates the exact center of the transformation box, and we can actually move this around. I want my windows to go to the vanishing point on the left side, so I will drag this crosshair over and place it directly on top. If you can't see the vanishing point because it's too far out, just zoom out to find it. In the tools property menu here, I have scale ratio width and height and also keep aspect ratio. I want to make sure keep aspect ratio is turned on. Then all I have to do is click the percentage down and you can see my window now moves in perspective. I can also use control J to duplicate the layer and do that again for all of the windows. Since the ratio only goes by whole numbers, you may have to make small adjustments for it to look right. Also, this works best with one point perspective. With the two point perspective, only the lines going towards the left vanishing point will stay in perspective. This means the ones going to the right vanishing point will not be in the correct perspective, so you will have to make some small adjustments. Regardless, you just saved a ton of time not having to completely redraw a bunch of detailed windows. I created a staff here for a character in a short comic I was making, and I knew this staff would appear in many panels, so I made it as a vector. This one is actually a bit tricky because it is so long and narrow, but I will show how we can reuse this. First, in my sketch layer, I created a rough sketch showing how I'd like it to look. Next, I'll use the operation tool to select the object and copy and paste it into a new vector layer. You will have to make a new layer each time you do this because it makes manipulating it easier. But after you are done manipulating them, you can merge them into one vector layer. I mentioned this before, but when you merge vector layers, you wanna make sure to use the transfer to lower layer option because this will make sure it stays as a vector, otherwise it might merge it into a raster layer. So after I pasted the clip art, Clip Studio Paint does paste in place, so you may need to zoom out to find where it pasted it. From this point, how you manipulate it may change based on the object and the situation and how you want it to look. For this one, I need to rotate it and make it larger, so I'm going to use the transformation tool. Now this is a very important part to keep in mind. When you manipulate using the transform tool in Clip Studio Paint, after you click OK, the bounding box will reset, so it will make it more difficult to make edits after you confirm it. So I find it works best to get it as close as possible in one go. What is convenient is that you can change options while transforming. So if I start off with scale and rotate, I can then switch to free transform if I need to. Another important thing to keep in mind when scaling is the change vector width option. 
Now you can change it manually after you click OK, but if you're like me and you make vector clip art and sometimes you use the figure tool and sometimes you draw normally with the pen tool, your line thickness might be all over the place which makes manually changing it a bit frustrating. It's kind of easier to show than explain how it happens, so I will click OK. I'll use the operation tool to select this, and it says the brush size is four. So if I click this up, you can see the lines I made with the figure tool, like this circle are way thicker than the ones I drew freehand with the pen tool. This is because my figure brush was maybe a six originally, but my pen brush size was more like a 30. So that 30 to six is a much more drastic change than the four to six. And you can see they are all size six, but I frequently have my pen tool set to about 30. So that is why the difference happens. You can use the correct line width tool to make this thicker or thinner as needed. But as you can see, the result is not so good. So that is why I prefer to do it while I'm transforming. Click Control T to go into transformation mode. Now check on change vector width. So I have to make this a lot bigger. And if there's a big difference like this, don't scale it up all the way, just enough so that the thickness looks about the same as the other line art, and then click OK. Now I'll do a Control T again to go into transform mode, and I will click off change vector width. So now the width of the lines will not scale at all, and I'll adjust it into the position I'm looking for. Now this prop is very long, so it is sticking out into the other panels here. There are a couple of ways to fix this. You can use the vector eraser tool to erase it, or you can add a mask to the layer. I usually prefer to add a mask to the layer, but since I'll have another staff to place, I'll just erase it this time. This was an easy one because I just had to scale and rotate it, but what if you have one like in this next panel where it's going to be angled? I'll grab the original staff again and copy and paste it into a new vector layer and scale and rotate it again. After I've scaled and rotated it, I will use free transform to make it a bit tilted and a bit like it's in perspective. I don't usually use the perspective option since it's more difficult to control. When done, click OK. The issue now is that it looks very flat. This is a round object, so it should look round. Now I will go in and redraw some areas so they look curved and three dimensional. And now this is done. Here are a couple of other assets I've used. So for example, I've made some simple keyboards here. Since in my comic Celestial Chronicle Xion, there are a lot of keyboards. I have two sizes here to make it easier to resize them. I also made this gun and made it from different viewpoints to make it a bit easier to manipulate, but it is a bit complicated, so it was a bit more difficult to control. If it's this complicated, a 3D asset may be better. In fact, I ended up switching to 3D guns a bit later on in my comic. There's a trade-off since they don't look as nice, but it does make things easier. 
I can also make a video later about how to use 3D objects if you're interested in that. Let me know in the comments. This series was definitely longer than I expected, but there was just so much to go over here, and I think I got through everything. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer it. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this one, be sure to like and subscribe because I do plan on making more and more so we can all grow as artists and make our busy lives a little easier.